Hey Sam, Hi, welcome. Tom. Nice to have you here. Um, I just finished watching the, the documentary and it's so beautiful to see the culture and, and how you got like a lot of uh, the Latin and Puerto Rican flavor on it. And it's like really like a happy feeling, you no? Know? Um, I want to know how, how was the experience of, of doing it for you? It was wonderful. Uh, I think that was a huge part of making this film uh, for me. I first went to Colombia uh, back in 2014, uh, where I discovered Miguelito's record and really fell in love with, uh, with that culture and that part of the world. And for me, Miguelito's record and making this film was honestly a great excuse to, to tell a story about, about, about the, a culture that I really fell in love with. And uh, it was great, yeah. But how did it happen? Because you just got to the only record and probably one of the few copies that are out there. And, mm -hmm. and how did Miguelito happen in, in your life? Because it's just it's such a specific and unique story, story as well. Um, yeah, so, so I'm, a, I'm also a trumpet player and, and, and a record collector. And so I went traveling with a good friend of mine who'd heard a lot about about Colombia and it's a wonderful country to travel in. Uh, many, many, many of our friends are from Colombia and, and we just thought it would be a great, a, great, um, a great travel sort of journey. And we were traveling around, uh, we'd, we were lucky enough to be there at the same time as the Barranquilla um, Carnival and we went on down to Cali and we uh, discovered this culture of, of, of record collecting and of people who, embody salsa um, more than anywhere else in the world. And it was just such a, an eye-opening experience. And uh, the friend of mine that I went traveling with is also a musician and, and, and his, uh, somehow his record had become, uh, a, one of his songs had gained a bit of uh, interest over there. And long story short, we met more and more record collectors and as I was digging through, I discovered Miguelito's record, which just stuck out. Like, you know, all these guys, all these fantastic musicians, this really strange cover. And, and then I heard Payaso and, and the story. And, and that was really it. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, what, what about, do you, do you, you say you're a musician. Are you a dancer as well? Like, what's your feeling with salsa? Yes, well, I, I, I am learning uh, my, my salsa. I'm uh, all my Cali teachers. The Cali style is very special. Oh, and contrast, it's a hard one, yes. Uh, in contrast to Puerto Rico and New York, but uh, I would not consider myself a professional dancer, no. Uh, <laughs> well, but, you got uh, I really, Thank you. I really began my love with, with, uh, with salsa, honestly, through... Um, uh, trumpeters like Arturo Sandoval, uh, films like Buena Vista Social Club was a huge influence. And then, you know, um, you just once, once you get into it, you just would grow and grow. And, you know, and I, now I'm really immersed in it and, and collect a lot of salsa records and, you know, dance and everything. That's, that's so cool. Um, <laughs> how else do you, do you speak any Spanish? How do you feel about it? I hear a few words in the documentary, but I also, hear other people like kind of like being the translator there. So how was that yeah. for you? That's, well, yes. Um, my Spanish at the beginning of the film wasn't great and it definitely developed as it, as it went on. And um, now I'm, I'm feeling a lot more confident about it. But that was a really interesting thing within uh, the film. Uh, a lot of the times I was a bit unsure about what was going on around me. But, you know, sometimes it was, I'd be there by myself or sometimes I'd be there with a translator. But it was interesting because often what I could do is ask questions maybe that were a bit more, uh, you know, on the nose and a bit more um, confrontational, things that maybe I'd be a bit afraid of asking in, in my own language. But with that boundary, you know, when I didn't really know what someone else was saying, it was like, well, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> like I didn't... I would just say it and whatever comes out, comes out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it was also... I had, I think I had a pretty good idea about what was being captured as we were filming. Uh, but, you know, going into post and, and translating the whole film and some, especially the stuff in Puerto Rico with Miguelito's family, uh, you know, it was, 
really interesting for me because it was like discovering a whole other story and, and the importance of a new, of so many new things that I didn't even know I was capturing at the, at the very moment of the film. Well, so should we have this conversation in Spanish now? Si, sí, claro. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how long did it take you? So you went in 2014, right? And then you were with the idea to do this documentary and just like you were traveling, listening, and it just happened. Yeah, so I heard the record in 2014. Uh, I thought it was a great idea. I came back to Sydney and honestly, uh, it was... I, it was too, everyone told me this was impossible. It's just not going to happen. It was too complicated, too many boundaries. You can't find anyone. And so I sort of lost a bit of faith, but I guess just my interest and love of the music and, and, and continuing to listen to the record, uh, I guess I just couldn't let go of it. I guess couldn't let go of it. And I guess through the friends, the, the support of friends, I eventually, you know, I just, pushed myself into it and a couple of years later I just said oh, look I'm just going to go back to New York I'd already made one trip I think the year after and couldn't find any of the family couldn't find anyone it was too difficult but then I gave it another crack and and it all happened and so really from from the idea back in 2014 to it being completed uh yeah it was like six years all up Whoa, that's nice. commitment. Well done. Yeah. The result is amazing. So you did, you did really well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So um, we have a question here from, from Facebook. Uh, and it's like, how did you manage to keep the secret from Harvey? Um, I guess ethically, it's, it's so, it was, I was very much about, you know, I, I didn't want to be get in the way of the relationship between Harvey and the family. You know, I think I was very clear with both of them, with both groups that I was not going to be part or privy to, to keeping any secrets or telling on anything. I felt my job as a documentary filmmaker uh, was not to manipulate stuff. You know, I just really wanted to try and capture what these guys were going through. I mean, they hadn't seen each other for almost 40 years. Um, how they felt about Harvey and how Harvey felt about them. You know, I just felt ethically, it was much better if I just didn't say anything. And you know, like, and there were many times throughout the shoot where both people would say, what do they think of this? Or have they seen this? Or, and I just didn't want to buy into it because I didn't think it was right. I think that that's, that's really beautiful as well. Uh, uh, how, how you come into this story, you know? Like, yeah. just there, like, kind of like, uh, putting the dots together and, and probably without you, that conversation would have never happened. So I think that your, your role on it is really, it's beautiful. And I was surprised on the first call with uh, one of the Miguelito sister, that it, it, it really, like, it sounded really like, weird because it's like there's a secret here is something dark here that we don't want to say we don't want to talk about it uh, and then when you say when you wanted to start about this and you say that people were saying like it's impossible you are not going uh, to go anywhere with this so why do you think that was all of this like shadow going on i think uh i really think it's got to do with the fact of um had a lot to do with what had happened in the past um, I think it's got a lot to do with uh, where, um, with with wealth and with with where Gladys and their family come from and how they feel and that what Harvey had really done to them, uh, how they just didn't want to trust anyone. You know, like this guy, this gringo from the other side of the world, wants to make a film. It almost felt like possibly that the same thing was going to happen again. You know, like of what. Harvey had done or how more more to put it how Harvey had affected you know their lives I think there was a, a real speculation about my my um my involvement and my interest in Miguelito and the family and it took a long time you know that was Gladys that's a that's a special relationship I really had to 
work work on that one <laughs> to turn it around. And now we're, we're we're great friends, and you know we talk all the time, and you know we're in the family together. But look, fair cool. enough. You know, like I think the the situation, uh, you know, where they came from is really tough, really tough, and uh, I don't really understand it. I mean, I mean, you know, I've never been through that, but um, you know, it's totally understandable of. of how they would see me and uh, so look but once we all met and my intentions were clear it was all good yeah that's beautiful I think that you earned that and so well done so you say that you're friends with her now what's it, the current relationship with the people that appear in the documentary like Harvey Gladys Leonor yeah everyone's great uh, the family we're really close uh, we talk all the time uh, all, all of Miguelito's family, they're all across, you know, there's some in Puerto Rico, but then a lot are in the States and, 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 and so forth. All the musicians, we're, we're all really close. We still talk um, frequently. Uh, Harvey, unfortunately, uh, is uh, not, we're not that close anymore. Um, he's uh, not a huge fan of, um, of uh, the end result of the film and um, he's... Uh, just de-added me on Facebook this week, so you know, I guess for now. But look, he, you know, he's got he's got his temper. But look, it's fine. I mean, I still love Harvey, but um, you know, it's incredibly confronting. I can imagine for him. Uh, but um, yeah, well, everyone else we're on good terms. That's that's beautiful. Were, did you have a chance to play with the musicians as well? Yeah, with quite a few of them. Uh, Yafé, the guy who's in the, the Timbalero in the park, he's the dock edge logo. Yeah, we had a good jam and um, he's, he's a great fun guy. And all the collectors- That's of the character. He like was seducing the camera when he was playing. It was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yafé, he's a fun guy. Uh, and you know, all the record collectors at the beginning, we spent like, they, they love the film and they, they you know, they have a, in Cali, they have probably the biggest, uh, arguably the biggest festival of salsa, you know, um, the, yes. uh, the Cali Fair. And uh, they, for their Miguelito, it was a huge part of their culture and we, we presented it last year and it was, a, it was a real hit. And, you know, every time now I'm there, we just, you know, drink, play records, you know, hang out. It's, it's really a wonderful time. Yeah. So would you say that apart from Harvey, is the rest of the people happy um, with, the, with the result, with the final result of the documentary? Oh, very much so. I think everyone's very happy with it. Um, we had uh, the first screening we had, which was in Miguelito's Barrio in, in Manuela Perez. And um, <laughs> it was really fantastic. You know, all that the family presented the film, all of his friends that I'd never met just sort of came out of the woodworks and were sort of telling me stories about Miguelito and what he was like and the memories of the album. You know, it was such a, as, as you can tell in the film and seeing the film, it was such a, a personal journey for me to undisco discover all these guys. Um, and, you know, when, when do you stop turning the pages in, in, in this sort of story? But, uh, it was when we had that screening and showed it to all those guys that, um, you know, so many memories and, and emotions came out for them, you know? Uh, I yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and what? This was like your first documentary, right? Yes, this is my first feature documentary. And, and, and you chose such a unique um, topic and like a culture to do it and being your first experience as well and in another language, mm -hmm. how that teach you about yourself, how that influences your life? In, like, what did you learn from that process? Oh, I learned a lot of things. I, I think, <laughs> big question. I, I, I know. <laughs> I, I learned a lot of things. I think the, the I guess, the big things were just to, to be really curious and, uh, to not be afraid to ask obvious questions, you know? I think, uh, uh, and that was the, the lucky thing about it being another language is there was so many things and so many, you know, I think it's really interesting when you watch uh, films about cultures that are about other cultures that aren't your own. And, you know, there's a, a really innocent curiosity about the situation or, 
you know, I think, for, for instance, the whole relationship between Puerto Rico and the States is incredibly complicated and, and, and a, a really strange thing. And, uh, you know, just from an outside perspective, you could just sort of observe it as what it was. And I think in the end, in Miguelito, you can see those relationships, you know, of how, you know, an American producer comes into this, like, tropical island that's sort of been taken advantage of where the, the roles are and, and who's using who and what's getting what out of what. Um, so, yeah, I guess I learned just to, to, to be open, be curious and, um, you know, just follow your instincts and, um, and, and, and don't, don't make stories that you're not interested in because they go for a long time and you could be stuck. That's, it. that's good. Yeah. And it's beautiful. Um, we have a, a question here from, from Mona and she's like, has the film brought new life to the album? Yeah, has so we, new we, demand? Yeah. we are trying to re-release the album at the moment. Um, uh, we've got a couple of labels interested. Uh, it's a little complicated with, um, with Harvey, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to re-release the record uh, in the coming year. Yeah, that's the plan. Oh, that's so good. So you'll be busy uh, doing that. I hope so, yeah. That's There's already been a few, I mean, for instance, in the end of the film, that, that group from Cali, uh, Malo Malo, they've um, recorded mm -hmm. a few of Miguelito's tracks. So, uh, yeah, hopefully there's more to come. Great. Uh, have you uh, seen other mu music documentaries for inspiration? Yeah, well, a big, a big inspiration was Buena Vista Social Club, of course. Um, I was very influenced by the way that story was told and how uh, the musicians on the album were portrayed. You know, I think initially for me, that was the idea of the film. I, I really wanted to, you know, initially as I couldn't make contact with Miguelito's family and I was so interested in the people around Miguelito, you know, Ponsenia, Nelson Feliciano, Papo, these are such incredible musicians, legendary, a bit like when it was the social club. So the idea of having these little small stories within the story was a, was a big part of of an influence for, for how I was going to make Miguelito. Oh, great. Uh, and you just mentioned that, <clears throat> sorry, that um, you will be working to re release his album again. Uh, have you, do you have plans about doing another documentary or uh, what your future looks like? Yeah, so uh, I'm starting to uh, write the next film, which is about the record collectors in Cali. And it's about, it's sort of called the Melomanos, which sort of trans translates to something like audio file. And- uh, What's the name of the sorry? Melomanos. Mel okay, never heard it before, good. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, it's, it's a bit more complicated than, than about these record collectors. I mean, these are special guys, they're, almost cultural figures in, in Cali and uh, almost uh, cult or I would say the cultural identity of the city is focused and held together by these record collectors um, who are historians, gatekeepers to the city. And I've uh, spent a lot of time with them over the last, uh, last uh, six months, well, probably a year. And yeah, I'm really, trying to mold something around these guys that I care a lot about and, and I love their connection to music. Are there many of them on, on the streets? Oh yeah, they, it's, it's, look, a real scene. it's a real scene. Whoa, I, I, the, I was so surprised on that scene that they, um, I can't remember the name, but it was the guy that finds a record of Miguelito, like kind of like <laughs> in the back of the room, full of records. It was like, whoa, that's so beautiful. So like <laughs> unique. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's that's a common thing in Cali, you know. Like these guys, their prized possessions are their records. You know, it's a real it's a real show of you know, who you are. You got a good record collection, you know. You 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 big you you high up there in the, in the whoa, in the spectrum. So, so they sell that. Is that like the their? Oh, yeah. yeah, that that's a uh, that's. I think, you know, going through those three places, you know, you can argue that, you know, Cuba or Cuba and Puerto Rico is sort of where 
the rhythm of salsa was born, but then in New York was where it sort of amalgamated with all the different cultures. But in both those places, the music, the, the salsa is sort of on the decline, you know, in, in New York, it's predominantly listened to by the older generation. And in Puerto Rico, it's there, but it's not as almost prominent on the, on, on the cultural side of things, you know. In Cali, where salsa doesn't even come from, they've just embraced it and, and made it their thing. And now you can go and kids in the street will listen to records from the 70s and they're like pop songs, you know, and, and yeah. Yeah, they even created their own like salsa style and everything. So like yeah. Cali, it's really known for uh, salsa and music and even like tango. So uh, that's such a rich place to be. I think you chose the right, right destination to, to uh, your, your to practice your Spanish, your music and, and <laughs> work. Gracias. So, yeah. Thank you. Gracias. No <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you to both of you, actually. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Sam. That's been wonderful. For those of you uh, out there on Facebook, I'm just posting the information, there we go, uh, of the, the remaining screening for Sam's film at Dock Edge, which is on uh, Wednesday, the 1st of July at 9pm. Um, so for any of you who've uh, either come in to this uh, live but not having seen the film or any of you who are watching it as a replay later on if you've still got some time to get along and see Miguel Ito at Dock Edge 2020. So thank you very much to both of you.